welcome to my channel. My name is Naomi and I am so excited that you're here. So traditionally, my introduction would say that I am a student teacher in Southern Louisiana. My new introduction and I am so super excited to say this out loud for the first time on YouTube, but I'm already crying. Okay, cool. I'm turning around, I'm crying. This is, you know, just who I am as a person. Um, <laughs> my name is Naomi and I'm officially a first year teacher. Oh my goodness, that is so weird to say out loud. I already announced it on my Instagram, so if you are not following me on there, be sure to follow me. The link is in the description box below, and it is also going to be displayed right here. It is just at School Bell Stories on Instagram, the same exact name as on my YouTube channel. Okay, so, um... News is out. I am gonna be a teacher. I have a job, a full-time teaching job. Like that is just crazy to say. I am 22 years old and fully have a packet of insurance and retirement plans sitting on my desk. Um, but like, that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted this for so long and I'm so super excited that it's finally here. And uh, I've been through a lot. College was hard. I changed my major a million times. It took me a while to even get here. The fact that I can finally say that there is some light. I am just so excited. I mean, there were amazing things in between all of this. It wasn't all awful. I feel like all I do is complain, but no. I really did have a great time in my program and through my field experiences and student teaching and stuff, but you know, there was some some difficulties. Pandemic will we'll do that. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying, but let's just chat and I'll tell you guys about my job searching process, how it happened, how this job came about, and I'm going to be a teacher. <laughs> I am going to be teaching fifth grade, which is so exciting because out of every single elementary grade, fifth is my absolute favorite. I just love the age group. I love where they are developmentally. Like for an elementary setting, you know, they are definitely more independent, but they're still young and they're still kids and you can still get away with doing like playful things that are kind of cheesy that, you know, high schoolers would think is so lame. So I love that aspect. I do also love the rigor of the fifth grade curriculum too. So I'm very excited. I also just found out that I passed the two praxis exams in order to be certified for secondary English as well because for a while I thought I was potentially going to go into the secondary realm and you know that might be on the table still in the long run but for now that's not where I am but that is such good news also because that means that I will not only be certified to teach elementary first through fifth but I will also be certified to teach secondary English seven through twelve so yay great news all around I've just been taking a lot of great size of relief lately and size of I finally made it and I am just so happy and joyful to be able to share all of this with you guys finally officially now that things are happening and they have happened and all the jazz. Anyways, let's talk about how I actually got the job that I got. I did not plan on starting job searching until about November. I don't know, when do you job search for job starting in January? You know, it's kind of weird because some schools have openings and then some schools just don't because it's the mid year. Well. LSU partnered with a few school districts around Louisiana and some outside school districts from other states and put on a virtual education networking fair, something like that. I forget what the official title was, but it was basically for people aspiring to be teachers, school counselors, speech pathologists, just anything kind of in the educational realm where you want to work with children. So they partnered with all these districts and you got to set up meetings. Originally, I wasn't going to do it because I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't have my resume ready, like I'm just a hot mess. But I was like, no, I really should do it because even if none of them have job openings, that's a good way to you know, put my name out there or maybe get some guidance and direction as to when I should expect to be looking, when I should be applying, should I expect things to look virtual or in person for specific districts. So I was like, I'm gonna do it, whatever. The day came and I met with some districts and the district that I'm actually working in, well, the meeting was supposed to be 10 minutes, I'm pretty sure, but we ended up talking for like 30, 45 minutes and it was such a good conversation and I just loved loved everything that they had to say. So who I met with, I met with two amazing women in HR and they literally sold me on the district. I've done a few field experiences there, but not many, a couple observations and really just what I've known from one or two friends that I have that work in that district. But the way that they presented it, it literally just was like my utopian school district and the things that they were talking about and kind of their philosophy on education made my heart so happy. At one point in the meeting, thank goodness, 
so it's virtual because I'm just a hot mess and was especially that day. Um, my emotions are just everywhere all the time. One of the women, she was talking about something and kind of why she loves the district and why she stayed there for so long and I just started crying and I said, oh my God, Naomi, you cannot be crying right now. Like you need to be professional and I'm like crying because my heart was just so happy and I was like, this is, that's where I want to be like. <laughs> But also at this time was when I was just so convinced in my brain that I was going to be a high school teacher, forget elementary. Well, they presented a job opening for an elementary school. It's a fifth grade ELA and social studies position. And I was like, hmm, okay. And they were like, you should apply. And I was like, oh yeah, okay. But in my mind, like, I'm trying to go to high school. So anyway, I leave that meeting and I'm just kind of like letting it sit with me. And Every day, more and more, the position just started to seem so much more appealing to me. And staying in elementary and being with fifth grade, because I really do love fifth grade so, so, so much, and I do love elementary. But I think I was just, I don't know, guys. I was just going through a lot this semester, and especially during that time period of the semester. Through some prayer and just letting it sit with me, I realized that I actually kind of do want to be in elementary and I do love elementary and I can't let some experiences from the past um, and the present kind of stir me away from what I really want. I just need to use that to find what it is that I need to be able to succeed and spark that flame that is lit inside of me for elementary, even though, you know, it dipped out a little bit, you know, how could I re-spark that? That conversation kind of re-sparked my excitement for elementary and I didn't even realize it as it was happening to me. But every time I would think about jobs and stuff like that position just always kept coming to the forefront of my brain. Not only because it was open and available and ready for someone in January, but because it was fifth grade and it was ELA and social studies. And those are my two favorite subjects and my favorite grade and a district that I cried at a meeting about because I loved what they were saying so much. And the things that they were saying just spoke to what I felt that I really needed. This is just kind of sitting in the back of my brain and I'm praying about it. And I'm like, okay, elementary, yeah, that that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know, I think I was just rebelling for a hot second, but whatever. So I didn't immediately apply for the position just because I was trying to figure things out and trying to figure out what I wanted. And also at this time, things were crazy in my life. If you haven't seen my other two videos, definitely go check them out because it gives you an insight of kind of what I've been dealing with this semester with student teaching in a pandemic. That time period while all this was going on was just hectic, busy. I was just really trying to take any free time that I had for myself because I needed it. October passes. It's kind of the beginning of November and my friend who is also student teaching right now She was just hired at her student teaching placement school and she is so super excited about it And I'm so super happy for her. She loves it there But she was hired there and her principal reached out and was like hi if you know any other amazing People who are about to graduate we have this other position open um, And so she kind of put my name in the mix there and also one of my professors She has connections with some of the administrators at that at school and so they kind of also said the same thing hey if you know anyone let us know like we have this position open and so she also told me about it and then put my name in the mix and stuff I knew it was a great school and I was like okay yes like I'll be open to going and seeing what it's like and all this stuff so this is my very first teaching interview this is a different position than the one that I have now but this one was fifth grade ELA as far as I know well I think the principal called me on like a Friday we set up an interview for that upcoming Monday and so I spent that whole weekend really preparing my resume getting it good and professional and nice and then I also spent that whole weekend making a teaching portfolio in this portfolio I kind of included a lot of my credential documents some lesson plan samples and student work samples and then also some of my classroom management plan and not one that I currently have an effect because I don't have my own classroom, but kind of what I would be working with or off of based off of the school's policies of a classroom management plan. So if you want me to talk more about what I put in my teaching portfolio and kind of how I went about using it, let me know because that could be a whole nother video in itself. I'm not really going to talk much about that, but I did prepare one of those and a resume. So I went into this first interview and I felt very confident with how I responded, especially with it being my first, you know, career interview ever. Find Say, of course there's things I could have said better or mentioned or not mentioned in X Y and Z but 
I felt okay with how it went. They also let me know in that interview that the position was no longer open because the teacher that they thought was going to be leaving the school actually going to be coming back. I don't really know what happened, but I don't really need to know either. I just know that the position was no longer open. So, you know, it was fun. It was fine. It was good interview practice. I appreciate them, you know, still talking to me and meeting with me and allowing me to use that as interview practice. Still a great school. I'm so super happy that my friend is going to be teaching there because I know she loves it and she's going to love it. That night I came home and I was just kind of discouraged for putting off my job search, but also I knew that I couldn't really have started it much earlier because again, it's, you know, the middle of October, what positions are open? And if there are positions open, are they even ones that I would be willing to take? I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I am not a lower elementary girly at all. Like, lower elementary is not for me. But a lot of the positions that were open around me were lower elementary, or they were at schools that I knew just couldn't provide me the support that I needed as a first year teacher. Not saying they're bad schools, but what I need is different than what other teachers need. And they just weren't the right schools for me. And I knew that right off the bat from either prior experiences or conversations with others about those schools. So I was just kind of feeling discouraged and very anxious. I told myself I had like a little come to Jesus talk in the middle of my dining room as I was eating some type of dinner. Who knows, it was probably frozen lasagna. Actually, no, I think it was frozen lasagna. Anyway, I'm like, okay, I'm going to apply for the position in the other school district. And I'm not gonna say any names obviously for security and safety reasons but in the district I'm working with we're gonna call it ABC district and so I got on my computer and immediately submitted my application and I was like all right that's my job I don't know how I'm going to make it my job but I'm gonna make it my job I was kind of talking about my feelings with my professor who was involved with kind of helping me in the first job interview experience and process and I was telling her like oh my gosh how do I get them to pay attention to the fact that I apply like what do I do and so she was like I think you should email the principal tomorrow morning and look I'm gonna write you a letter of recommendation attach this with your resume and your email the next morning I think it was like a Friday I don't know I emailed the principal of the school in the ABC district and I basically told her that I applied and I was trying to see if the position was still available and I attached my resume and the letter of recommendation or the reference letter kind of whichever you choose to call it and within like 10 minutes she responded and was like okay hey like do you want to have an interview next week and I was like <laughs> freaking out because I didn't expect her to respond so immediately but I'm so grateful that she did and it got me really excited and pumped and I was like yeah was kind of preparing for the interview all weekend and this school um, asked me to prepare a sample ELA lesson and they sent me two state standards that I could choose from to base my lesson off of. And so when I went into this interview, I brought my resumes, I brought again my teaching portfolio and that sample lesson. I didn't use my teaching portfolio as much in this um, second interview as I did the first. And I don't know if that was a strength or weakness in my interview, but I mean, I got the job, so. Oh well. But how the interview went, we just kind of talked for a little bit. They asked me questions. I was able to ask them some questions. And it was a really good dialogue. And I loved their responses to things. And I liked the questions that they were asking me because I could tell the kind of emphasis on educational philosophy and the way that they ran their school and the culture of the school that they wanted to create and the type of teacher that they were looking for for this position. I could tell that through their questions. And I was like, I want to be that teacher for you. Like, please let me be that teacher. I I literally walked out of the interview and I was like, I love this school with everything inside of me. I've only been here for 30 minutes and I absolutely want to teach here. 100%. This is my school. I feel it in my bones. There were just like a lot of little things in prayer that really got me excited about it. And I walked out and I just felt like this is right. I go into my student teaching school the next day and I get a phone call and it's from about the area that the school that I just interviewed is and I'm like oh my goodness she's about to tell me whether or not she wants to hire me or not and this is so terrifying so I took my phone I went outside and I answered it and it was indeed the principal and she was basically like we're so excited thank you so much for coming to our interview and we'd like to offer you the position and <laughs> I don't even think I just made a noise 
house right now. I'm getting so excited, like I'm reliving this moment. But she offered me the position on the phone less than 24 hours later, and I immediately said yes. I know sometimes people are like, oh no, you need to wait and tell them you'll think about it and blah, blah, blah. But I knew as soon as I left that interview that that was my school. Like I knew 100% immediately that's where I needed to be, that's where I wanted to be. So I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna wait, I'm gonna say yes. Like there's no point in delaying the inevitable. I'm gonna say yes anyway, so I'm just gonna tell her now, speed roll the process. So I was like, yes. Um, she's like, are you sure? And I said, yes. And I kind of just told her literally what I told you guys that I knew. It was just so validating and affirming and I am so excited. I've been working with HR to get all my documents kind of squared away and I've been talking with my principal today a lot especially trying to set up things for after the Thanksgiving break in to be able to go in and observe some classes to be able to get familiar with the curriculum and kind of the procedures that you know go on at the school and I learned the ropes and how to be a teacher there I am just so happy to share this news with you guys with that being said I am preparing to set up my classroom I have no idea what it looks like I have no idea what is in there yet um, I won't be able to see it until after for Thanksgiving break, which is in a few days, once I'm able to get back to the school. But I do have an Amazon wish list and I've been sharing it with some family and friends and stuff. Also in the description of all my videos, if you were interested in donating, you do not have to. I am not asking you to. However, if you feel called to donate, that link is in the description box below. But if you cannot donate, please like do not feel pressure to at all. Just send your well wishes and prayers and that will be enough for me. I have been getting some donations in the mail and I just feel so blessed and so thankful to have this and to have people in my life who want to help my students learn and who want to help me create the classroom environment that promotes learning and a love of reading and just kind of all of the things. So I want to show you guys some of the donations that I've got already in the mail. There's a few things that have not come in the mail yet that I'm still waiting on arriving that I've seen people purchase and it's just blowing my mind that people are even donating in the first place. But I want to show you guys these items because they have come in the mail just to kind of like show off my donors because they are so super amazing special human beings who deserve all the praise in the world for donating to my classroom. So I'm just kind of gonna show them off a little bit. Um, the first two things are some books, but I didn't get a note with them. And Amazon does not tell you who bought your items unless the donor chooses to include that information. So I don't know who bought me these, but I'm so like very pumped about it. Um, I don't know if they're from the same person or a different person, but either way, I'm so excited and thankful for it. So the first one is this book, The Story of Alexander Hamilton. I have I think probably every book that is in this series, the story of whoever, whatever event on my wish list, and I'm so excited because um, nonfiction is so important, especially in fifth grade, as they're trying to learn those researching skills, and with me being social studies as well, I want them to be able to have a good knowledge about historical figures and events and stuff, so I'm so excited about this. This has to be from someone who knows that I love Hamilton the Musical, but I don't know because I didn't leave a name, so either way, I got this book and then this one also did not come with a note, but I'm so excited about this. This is Women in Science. I think it's 50 women. Um, yes, so 50 Women in Science and I'm so excited and it's just such a beautiful book and it basically just has short little biographies and anecdotes and stuff about a lot of women who were pioneers in the scientific world and so I love this. And the next thing is some more books. So this is actually from one of my good friend's moms. So I'm very excited. She got me three books. So the first one is Chrysanthemum, which I love this picture book. So I'm so super excited. This is just one of my favorites and it's a classic and I'm very excited to add this to my classroom library. The next one I haven't actually read, but I've heard amazing things about it. It is called How to Steal a Dog. So I'm also excited to add this into my classroom library. And then the last thing that she got me was Where the Red Fern Grows. And this is also um, a classic novel. I remember reading this when I was little. And so I'm just excited to be able to share this with my students. So Miss Carla, if you're watching, you're probably not. But Miss Carla, thank you so much for these donations. And the third round of donations that came in today was a bunch of school supplies. So I am so thankful for this. This is actually from my sister's boyfriend's family. Thank you to Brittany and Vinny for donating these. Oh, it's going to help with my classroom so, so, so much. So what is in here? Here is I got a box of highlighters which will be super great when we practice annotating texts and things um, and then I got some glue sticks which is exciting so that way I can you know add in some art projects and a visual art integration into my classroom and lessons um, and then some erasers which I'm excited about because children go through erasers and pencils like 
craziness, so I'm glad to be able to have those. And lastly, Brittany and Vinny got me some scissors, so I'm excited because scissors are just like a hot commodity in classrooms, and sometimes they break, and sometimes they don't fit, and all the things, so they got me some scissors, which I am so excited about. So thank you, Brittany and Vinny, for adding um, these supplies to my classroom stock. I'm so excited, and I am so thankful. Um, so to everyone who donated so far, thank you so much. You guys just don't know how much it means to me, and I literally cry every time a new package arrives, every time that I see someone purchase something, so it just means the absolute world to me and my kiddos, and I can't wait for them to be able to use these supplies and read these books and really just feel so loved. And I cannot wait, and I'm so super excited to, you know, take on this new journey in fifth grade with ELA and social studies. My heart is just beating so full of joy, and oh my goodness, it's going to be amazing. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know how you're doing, and... If you have any recommendations for different books that I can add into my classroom library or other things for my classroom that you have found useful or you just kind of want to share, let me know down below um, so I can check those out. And definitely, definitely, definitely leave me some first year teacher tips. I'm definitely going to need them. Either way, whatever you decide to comment down below, I'd love to chat with you guys. And if you like this video, you can give it a big thumbs up down below as well or wherever the button is. And if you want to see more videos from me and follow me along, this first year teaching journey definitely click the subscribe button and if you click the bell you will get some extra notifications every time I post a new video I hope you have an amazing day I hope you cannot hear the storm that is outside but just know that it might be storming outside but it is sunshine and rainbows in my heart and I'm just smiling so 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 big because I am just so overfilled with love and happiness and joy and I hope that you guys experience the joy in your life and find the light that is trying to shine through this craziness of time so super soon. We are going to make it together and that's the only way that we're going to make it out. We can't do this alone. So just letting you know that I'm here for you. Thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.